morning. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm a veterinarian in Marietta, Georgia, with a specialty in fish health. Uh, I've got a book out on the subject and have done just about everything from um, diagnostics, examinations, biopsies, etc., all the way up to surgery. Um, I was doing surgery more than 10 years ago on koi and goldfish. Um, I said all that to say this, I, I kind of have a background in this stuff. And so I want to come to you and talk about uh, one of the most important steps in the management of a fish disease situation, and that would be uh, bacterial infections. You're watching this video if you are following the 20 step-by-step -step process of getting through a fish disease outbreak. Uh, whether this is salt water, uh, fresh water, or ponds, tropical fish tanks, doesn't matter. Most of the rules I'm going to talk about with regards to bacterial infections hold true. Uh, and I'll be emphatic on certain points, and I'm going to cover some ground pretty quickly. There'll be some side notes that I'll make, uh, sometimes accidentally, like I won't mean to include them in the dialogue, but they'll be there, and you might want to have a pen and paper handy. Um, because there's some little tidbits that might be of some value to you later. If you're a more advanced hobbyist and you're just trying to understand bacterial infections a little early, this could also be of some value to you. <clears throat> uh, you might notice that the video uh, is basically a guy at the wheel in the dark driving to work on a Saturday morning. Uh, that's just how much I love you that I'm putting this video together while I'm supposed to be drinking coffee, and I suppose actually that I will. All right, well, let's get started on the subject of bacterial infections. Let's figure that you are one of three people. You're looking at a fish with a rotting tail, or you're looking at a fish with a sore on the body, or you're that guy with a uh, fish in his pond with red blotches and sores showing up on the koi and goldfish. Well, here's the thing. If you will put it away in your brain that, and I quote, bacterial infections are not caused by bacteria. Yeah, I know, crazy. Well, bacterial infections are caused by environmental stressors. In other words, when you see a fish covered with sores or parasites or whatever, or sores or fin rot, you're looking at a fish that has been in suboptimal conditions for a period of time. Uh, possibly recent handling, possibly any of a variety of things that we've already covered as far as water quality, chilling, crowding, over or underfeeding, all of those things that we've already covered have precipitated this bacterial infection. So if you have tropical fish with fin rot, you know that your water quality isn't up to par. It's either too cold or there's ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH problems, whatever. Uh, if you have a fish with a rotting mouth, same thing. If you've got a koi showing up with sores, uh, same thing. Um, it's just that the bacteria go in and take up residency where those uh, fish are vulnerable. Or, for example, in a koi pond, when the fish breed, they have a tendency to run each other into stuff. Those cause defects in the skin and under the right conditions, or actually the wrong conditions, bacteria can take up in those lesions in the skin. So that's what you're dealing with. To the extent that, listen, if you have a, a koi especially with a bacterial infection and you had a choice between medicine or environmental management and it was mutually exclusive, I would take environmental management because I'm here to tell you that if you could spread those fish out in warm water, 78 to 80 degrees, um, with good food and minimal crowding and excellent water quality, like a well-established system with algae in it, chances are you're going to save 75 to 80% of those bacterially infected fish. The ones with clamped fins and, you know, they're not eating and they got pinched heads and drawn up bellies and all that stuff. They're, they're not going to make it. They probably won't make it even with treatment. But fix the environment, warm them up, give them their immune system back. But see, the thing is, you have the ability to do so much more than that because, and there's a video on shotguns, by the way, you could 
check the environment, improve the environment, warm the fish to 78 degrees, apply a shotgun against parasites, say Mardell clout, a little bit of Pratsy Pro, some anchor worm treatment if you want. Uh, or you could backtrack in a quarantine. There's a video on quarantine, low levels of salt with some Mardell cloud alongside that and clear any parasitisms and then some treatments for bacterial infections. So let me just briefly cover the kinds of bacterial infections that you might see. We talked a little bit about mouth rot, fin rot, body sores. There can also be infections inside the fish. Uh, in particular, the um, kidney sometimes can get infected. The um, condition that occurs when the kidney is under attack by a variety of pathogens is dropsy, uh, big belly, high drops. Um, that's where the fish enlarges, swells, all the scales stand up. That is mostly dropsy, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it's just costia. It's an external parasite that causes so much inflammation in the skin that the scales will stand up for that reason. Uh, interesting, sometimes if you treat that uh, and the costia goes away or the hexameter on the skin, spironucleus, etc., once that goes away, the scales lay down. So dropsy isn't always dropsy which accounts sometimes for why people say, I saved my fish from dropsy with this or that medication. And in actuality, they may only have cleared a skin parasite that's been chewing them up and causing the scales to rise. Moving on, if the gills get infected, this is something that people don't see or do. They'll have a fish that dies on the surface and they'll wonder why it died because they won't see a mark on it. A lot of times they'll just take that fish and throw it away or flush it and never look at the gills. Please promise me you'll look at the gills because sometimes you'll see the gills are blotchy red and white. Those white areas are, are places where the gills have gotten a bacterial infection. And uh, that's kind of a, a thing. If you don't notice that, then you're going to lose a few more fish before you finally peel the gill cover open and look in there and see those blotches and realize you're dealing with a gill infection. And uh, when you get into gill infections, again, it's a situation of improving the environment, testing and improving your environment, warming the fish to 78 degrees, and then applying a treatment for uh, presumed parasites, plus or minus one for infection. But with gill infections, the fish is having trouble breathing necessarily because when the gill is damaged, it's the same as me or you having lung damage. The oxygen exchange is impaired. Ammonia excretion is impaired. There's so much that goes wrong when the gills get screwed up. So notice the gills. The first thing to look at when a fish dies is presence or absence of body sores, fin rot, what the skin looks like, and check the gills. Can't emphasize that enough. Okay, um, let's see where to go from here. You understand that bacterial infections are a stress-borne problem. Bacteria are secondary invaders. They just get on the fish because the fish don't have the immune system to fight them off. Clearing them up involves handing the immune system back to the fish, treating parasites that probably are there, and then applying treatments for bacterial infections. Let's go and talk about those for a minute. And why don't I start with something that matters to the koi people, especially people with koi, goldfish, important or valuable saltwater fish, etc. The best treatment for bacterial infections in a fish is, and don't tune me out after this, is injections of antibiotics. All right, so in the first place, let's describe that. That is the administration of a liquid antibiotic through a syringe and needle into the abdomen of the fish. Is it possible to give the shot in the muscle or the back of the fish? Yes. I have uh, videos up of how to do the different injections. That's not to say you can't do it or have... Uh, but there's going to be problems getting hold of the injectables. A veterinarian's probably going to want to do them, uh, and that's understandable. Some people bring fish to my office because they don't want to shoot their own fish. I'll do that for them. Uh, in other cases, your veterinarian will work with you uh, or a local club member or something uh, to get the injectables for you. If a fish is worth it, it's worth injecting. It works great. So 
Uh, antibiotics along the lines of Batril is a current favorite of mine because it's easy to get hold of. It's safe, even in vast overdosage. It stays in the system for two days at least, possibly three, so you don't have to inject the fish every single day. Uh, it's metabolized very well, and it works quite well against most bacterial infections. Not all bacterial infections. Here's a little tidbit. Not every germ is responsive to every single uh, antibiotic. So there's a thing called a culture and sensitivity. That means you take a blood sample, which isn't particularly hard. I have a video of getting a blood sample I'll put up. Um, and you culture the blood. Uh, not you, but one of the more advanced resources in video number 20 um, will grow the blood sample out and figure out what kind of germs are in the blood and what they're sensitive to, and then you can start that particular antibiotic therapy. But back to injections, you obtain the antibiotic from your veterinarian or a fish veterinarian. Um, I hate to say it, but there's a couple of places online, huge places online that sell pet meds that will sell pretty much to anybody with a scrawled prescription and yes it involves forging a prescription but it doesn't even have to be very good it can be in crayon and you'll be able to get hold of some injectable antibiotics um, in any event you can um, inject those fish with antibiotics Batro, say every other day and very likely at 78 degrees, you'll likely save the fish that you're treating unless they're too far gone. What are some methods to use to treat bacterial infections without injections, you ask? Good question. There are and have been medicated foods. Those are foods with antibiotics milled right into them. Problem is, uh, it's 2017, uh, just about to be 2018. Right now, regulations on medicated food are so strict that it's very hard to get a medicated food. You may end up having to make your own medicated food. It's not very efficient, but it can be done. And that is obtaining an antibiotic in a powdered format. And what folks are doing is they're taking a very tasty pelleted food and they're solubilizing the antibiotic. Sometimes they'll use water, sometimes they'll use gel, uh, gelatin, and uh, mix the antibiotic in that and then top dress the feed. It's, it's a real hit or miss. I'm, I'm not crazy about that, but I'm equipped to inject fish, so I don't have to rely on that very much. But medicated food, homemade or purchased, is a good way of getting antibiotics into the fish. And then there are uh, direct treatments you can get. They're topicals. You can get those from your veterinarian as well. Some of those are particularly effective. And those are just applied to the infected areas, for example, on fish that have sores. Um, and the, but those involve handling, you see, and, and with the koi, with a body sore, for example, think about it. You're trying to treat a lesion topically with, on a koi, and you've had to net him up. So in the process of chase and net, you've probably abraded the lesion, created more scruffing of the lesion. So you're kind of making it worse before you put the topical on, transfer the fish back to the pond, and the topicals have a tendency to go away. However, I've had pretty good luck treating those lesions with tincture of iodine. You can get that up to 7%. 7% will stain the living heck out of your hands. But it also stains the lesions pretty well and helps them get started healing. Probably should do a video on just how to treat bacterial sores in koi because there's so much to go into. But right now we're talking about treatments for bacterial infections not the how to so we've talked about injections feeding antibiotics and topical treatment with antibiotics uh, let's talk about the last one that I'll cover it's pretty good you can do it in quarantine uh, separate holding facilities etc and that's putting antibiotics or antimicrobials in the water and let me tell you the difference pen and paper question mark okay Sometimes you put an antibiotic in the water with a fish in quarantine, and the reason you do that is because if you put the antibiotic directly into the pond, it's going to kill the beneficial bacteria controlling your water quality. Not a good thing. In a separate facility, the antibiotics go in and don't have any beneficial bacteria to kill, which is a better idea. Problem is, 
antibiotics added to the water where the fish is are not very well absorbed. They don't get into the fish for the most part, and the fish isn't in them long enough, especially with bacteriostatic drugs, for the drugs to do much to the bacteria. So antimicrobial products, they're not really antibiotics. They actually just kill the germs like a disinfectant. And there's a lot of those out there. For example, potassium permanganate, which is the subject of a complete other video. But potassium permanganate can be applied to the water the fish are in, sometimes even in the main system, at a particularly low dose to get the water to color purple. That is the color of active potassium permanganate. Inactive potassium permanganate is a tea color. So it's a medicine that you can actually see is working. If the water's purple, you are getting the antiparasite slash antibacterial benefits of potassium permanganate. That would be a pretty good treatment for a sizable group of fish with a bacterial infection where you're not going to inject them, but will treat them topically, is the application of potassium permanganate to the holding facility. Keep it purple for a period of time, which we'll cover in the uh, other video on potassium permanganate and um, that can help with bacterial infections. There's another compound called chloramine T. That is not in widespread popularity, but there was a study done at UC Davis that shows its efficacy and its safety. Finding it isn't always particularly easy, um, but on video number 20, there's a resources uh, link that'll take you to a page where uh, chloramine T will show up. And uh, probably anybody providing you with chloramine T will be able to show you uh, a page with dosing information on it. Otherwise, you can download that over at coivet.com, K-O-I-V-E-T.com. So we've covered injections of antibiotics, and I should do a video specifically on that, how to do it, what the doses are. Feeding oral antibiotics topical treatment with antibiotics and waterborne treatments with antibiotics and antimicrobials favoring potassium permanganate chloramine T and uh, not so much the furan antibiotics that turn the water yellow those are okay uh, that stuff's hard to get hold of and it's not much more than just meh or bleh or meh in the treatment of bacterial infections. Don't you love the science terms? Mainly bacterial infections go to taking better care of the fish, getting their water quality up, getting them to 78 degrees, putting some clout on them, getting a low level salt in there, spreading them out and minimizing crowding, get your aeration up if the fish's gills are affected because they're not breathing real good. That in a nutshell and I hope you were scribbling furiously, is my video on bacterial infections. I'm sure I forgot something. Do me a favor, put something in the comments below if I have forgotten something or if you have a specific idea. I do not respond to comments as a fish health consult. I can't emphasize that enough. I'm not going through my comments and addressing questions like, my fish has a rotting mouth, what do I do? I'm trying to put videos up that solve that problem in the 20 steps and some other sub videos. Uh, but if there's something I've forgotten to cover that you want to see in a video, put that in the comments and subscribe to the channel so that when those comments are answered and come up, you'll get notification of a video on that subject. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. It makes being up first thing in the morning doing this uh, worthwhile. Like the video, share it. Thanks.